which believe in Christ and they are zealous of the law too meaning they serve they follow Christ and they keep the law that's right you see this Paul and look at what's going on Paul this has been going on in Jerusalem since the last time you was here since chapter 15 <laughs> you could have said that this has been going on since chapter 15 Paul <laughs> but go ahead and read and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Now, they're being told, not that you're teaching the Gentiles that they don't have to be circumcised in order to come unto Christ. You're teaching Jews who live among the Gentiles that they don't have to circumcise their children and they don't have to deal with the laws of Moses. Mm -hmm. This is what the Jews who believe in Christ and keep the law in Jerusalem are being told. They're being told that's what you're doing all over the world. That was the rumor. That was the rumor. And side note, this is also another text I use to prove to cats that every time you read the word Gentile, it is not talking about Israelites who are considered Gentiles. Right, right here, there's a difference being made between Jew and Gentile. Right. He said, okay, well, he doing with the Gentiles, glory be to God. But are you teaching the Jews that are among the Gentiles? And he going to even continue to make the difference right. here. Continue at verse 22. So what is it, Paul? What is it, therefore? The multitude must needs come together. For they will hear that thou art come. <laughs> he said they must <laughs> needs come together like they got to, got to gather yeah. once they find out that you hear. They got to hear. It's going to happen. That's right. They hear Paul. Who? Oh, brother Paul. Yeah, we've been hearing rumors about Paul, man. We got to go see this dude and see That's right. if what we heard is true. That's right. So go ahead. Do therefore this that we say unto thee. We have four men which have a vial on them. Them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing mm. but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. So do this because once they would have seen Paul under a vow with other Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And would have seen him with the shaved head at the end of the vow. Right. And all of that walking in the temple. When your vow over, you shave your head at the temple. The priest going to shave it. Then they're going to offer up your turtle doves or whatever. When people see that, you ain't got to tell them nothing, Paul, when they gather. They're going to see you walking in vows and getting your head shaved at the temple. Turtle doves being offered. And they're going to know that what they heard of you was just that. Nothing. Right? That's right. So when Paul say, no, nah, man, that's what I teach, and this is what I stand on, because this is my liberty in Christ. That's right. Or do Paul get to walking in vows and shaving heads and such? Continue. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entering into the temple. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, no, I don't go there yet. Um... Oh, I skipped down. Yeah, you skipped down. Go, I want you to read 25. So Paul, do this. He said, so that they will know that this stuff is nothing and that you walk orderly and you keep the law. Right. So we know that Christ said in Matthew 5 and verse 17 okay. that whosoever these commandments and teach men not to keep them shall be called least in the kingdom. Right. So we know you ain't doing nothing like that. Right. Verse 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe... Now this is not Jews who live in other countries. These are verily other ethnicities. That's right. As far as the Gentiles... Go ahead. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, from blood, and from strangled and from fornication. Uh, in verse 26. Then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be made for every one of them. So Paul did it. And when Paul did it, this would carry out what the elder James said it would carry out. People would know you keep the law. It will also mean you're not teaching Jews who live outside of Jerusalem that they don't have to circumcise their children or keep the law. So you mean to tell me you're not going to teach a Jew who you teaching Christ to? 
See, Paul wasn't, he wasn't in there. They already knew the law. Paul and them would arise places and they would already be reading the law and the prophets when Paul and them got to the synagogue. Right. Paul did not go to other countries to teach cats the law. He went there to teach them Christ. And even though he was teaching them Christ, he wouldn't dare teach no Jew who lived in another country as he taught them Christ that they don't got to be circumcised or their children. But the Gentiles who would come into the synagogues and hear Paul teaching about Christ don't you try to make them keep what the Jews have to keep because the covenant is upon Israel. They are being given another way. God has provided two ways, basically. He done provided for those who under the covenant by blood and birth, and he has provided for those who come in later. And for those who come in later, he didn't name it here. He said, we wrote in a letter, as far, oh, he said, it's touching the Gentiles, we written, that they didn't have to do this, but that they would... Uh, keep themselves from the things offered to idols, from blood, from strangling them, from fornication. But the next sentence in that letter he wrote is, they got Moses in the synagogues. They will hear the law and the prophets read every Sabbath day. Anything else they need to know about circumcision, about the laws of cleanliness and uncleanliness and this and that, Moses going to teach them that. And as they are convinced by Moses... That is the thing that will cause them to be circumcised. Timothy was taught from a child by his mama and grandmother, right? So it's nothing for Timothy to make that decision when he's a grown man. In Christ, you know what, Paul? I want to be circumcised. But Titus probably wasn't in that same level Timothy was. So Titus wasn't forced just because he came to Jerusalem to visit to be circumcised. He's still going to have to make that decision for himself like Titus did. But you do not teach that a man do not have to be circumcised. You teach what Paul taught. You teach what the law taught. We read it in the law first. Circumcise your heart. When you circumcise your heart walking in Christ, the other stuff can come later. But if you're not circumcised in Christ, then trying to be circumcised after the order of Abraham, it's not you're not going to trick God somehow. So get Christ first and circumcise the foreskin of your heart like Abraham did from day one. And then eventually, when you make the choice to be circumcised in the flesh, it will all do what? He said that the works worked with the faith to make his faith perfect. So those who walk in faith, they're walking in faith, but they're not walking in perfection. Without the works to follow. So all of us who want to be of Abraham's household, if we not of his bloodline, we have to be circumcised in our heart first. That is the most important thing. And then let us make the decision to take on the covenant of circumcision, which is a sign of the, uncir of the circumcision that we already have in our hearts. These are a couple of the most important steps in walking in the steps of Abraham. And anybody who claim to be his seed, whether they're born in the bloodline or they come through the spirit and they're from another ethnicity, but they're coming into Christ. You do not teach them any other way. This is the truth of the gospel I have found, and I will stand by this because this is what I've been convinced of, and I hope you've been convinced or edified in the same way, and um, that's it, y'all. I thank y'all for y'all time. Thank you, brother. Life has its trials and tribulations Good and shady situations And to cover our sin Christ was made the propitiation The book of Hebrews let us know He performs mediation for the saints And we'll take the kingdom back from these greedy nations Through this life I have squirmed like a wretched worm But because of his grace I might not be the next to burn The adversaries against me at each and every turn But the Holy Spirit of God keeps me steady and firm Christ is the light of men His disciples invited him And he's inside of them when he knocks open up and bite them in To show us how to clean up this dirty life of sin with wisdom more precious than any diadem or priceless gem it's time for the soldiers of christ to stand up and if your brother fall then you should help to pick your man up when we were yet sinners for us christ was willing to die you want to know why i praise him now why